calcium. So calcium is often one element that for some farmers was always included in the NPK scenario. But I know that like NPK has been what people thought they always needed, but there are smart farmers that have always known that calcium is king. And what we know today is remarkable. Calcium is so vital. There's so many different ways that we can unlock it, so many different ways that we can we can make sure that it's in the right form, but we need to know what we're dealing with to, to make it accessible. Because calcium, though you know we've been using limestone and calcite and other building materials, mineral building materials to make buildings throughout our history, even into prehistoric times, we likely don't realize in our day-to-day -day life that all cell walls, all plant cell walls, have calcium in them. I mean, we, we probably know, you know, from all the commercials in childhood that calcium is required for our bone makeup, but it's also required for cell integrity, the strength of the cell wall. And because of that, because of that, that structural quality of calcium, it's needed in the right forms for plants and animals, all life, to be healthy. And so we need to make sure that our calcium is cycling, that we understand calcium well, because calcium is, is so important. And with, without adequate levels, we will not have proper plant performance. So when people talk about you know, fungal blights and all these things infecting their plants, a lot of the time it's because the cell wall's integrity is breaking down. The calcium pectin in the cell walls is the glue. And of course, boron and silicon are also in there. And we'll talk more about them as we go. But, but calcium, so important. And plants can take up more calcium than phosphorus. So despite NPK being what we originally, the chemists thought was all we needed, it's very clear that calcium is a macronutrient of equal or maybe arguably more importance, though all of these things are required. There's no hierarchy of need, really. There's hierarchy of access sometimes for certain certain processes, right? We need this element to come in first, and then in this next stage of reactions, we need that element to come in. And that that's that's totally true, but we need all of these elements, these nutrients available to for proper plant health and function and even for proper photosynthesis you know for some of these these nutrients and it goes beyond that for proper nitrogen fixation for some plants but we need to have these nutrients there for those reactions to occur so calcium is a macronutrient it's incredibly vital it's important for to boost plant immunity but also growth and repair so all the coral reefs, all the shells, they are made with calcium carbonate. But as I said before, limestone, right? Limestone is predominantly calcite and aragonite and also calcium carbonate. But it's that calcium carbonate that I want us to focus on for a moment because we find that in the shells, you find that in the tropical sands from the coral reefs. And this is why acidity in the oceans is such a big deal because all the like the animals with shells all you know all of them are relying upon an alkaline environment to maintain the integrity of their shells and as soon as we raise the acidity we we actually break those things down we we start to acidify them and they start to solubilize this is good to know for us in the soil right that we need to make sure that we're in the right pH zone to unlock calcium in the soils for us. But this also demonstrates why it's so incredibly important to keep the carbonic acid, the topsoil runoff, because the topsoil running off is always combining with water and creating carbonic acids. Um, the carbon is, right? And so that carbonic acid, that's H2CO3, that combines with calcium carbonate. So CaCO3. So as these things combine, we have a lot of CO2 being released, which again diffuses in the water and again becomes carbonic acid. 
and continues the process of acidification. It's a runaway train effect, in fact. And it's the most dire environmental situation that I know of. And it's the one that's being overlooked largely in the discussion about what's to be done about the environment and climate. The linchpin and all that is soil, but I would say the drawdown, the major drawdown, 10 times the drawdown that land plants can provide, and also the majority of our oxygen is the ocean and the coastline specifically. So we, we, we've, got to, we've got to do this. Um, and it's this basic science that has to be made um, available and understandable to, to, the, to the layman, to the politicians, uh, to perhaps people who willfully don't want to understand this information. We have to make it so clear that it's undeniable. And it's pretty easy to prove to yourself if you take some of that coral sand and put in some vinegar and watch it start to break down. <laughs>